All right, I'm with David Epstein, and David Epstein is the founder of Viaponica. And David, where are we today? Hugh, we are at the City of Refuge. It is a, a shelter for uh, women uh, located in the west end of Atlanta. And what are we looking at here? Well, this is a, uh, this is a, a small greenhouse project that we've completed to produce food and fish, vegetables and fish. And we've essentially built the greenhouse, a small 20 by 40 foot greenhouse, and we put three of our grow systems inside. And I'm just going straight down here. Tell me about these troughs. What are, what are the top trough, the bottom trough, the middle trough? What are, what are, we, what are we seeing here? Well, this is a three-level bio-garden. We call it the bio-incubator. The, the whole series of these we call bio-garden because they're biological gardens, and they work on a process that we call bioponics, which is very similar to hydroponics, only it's organic. Um, unlike hydroponics, hydroponics is pretty much chemical-based. Uh, it's similar to aquaponics because we raise fish in the tanks. We raise tilapia or finfish in the lower tank. The lower tank. We raise crawfish and shrimp in the middle tank or, or fish fry or do deep water culture. And in the upper beds we've got a, a biofilter which is a grow bed. And the uh, essentially so what we're doing here is we're 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 doing something similar to hydroponics in that it's soilless. We don't have any dirt in these beds. You may want to get a close up of the media that's in Yeah, the we will. Beds. But the um, but it's not dependent on the fish as in aquaponics uh, because we're not relying on the fish to produce our fertilizer. Right. We make, we make our own fertilizer from site-derived nutrient sources, and yep. we have a lot of those. There's all kinds of waste that we call resources that can be that can be uh, supplied on site either from human urine, from grasses, from weeds, and from food scraps. We don't use any manures. We don't feel that's necessary in food production. We save the manures for things like growing duckweed, which we use to feed chickens and, and uh, farm animals. So what was this thing you were just showing my associate Chris down here? You were showing at the bottom down here you had the, the bag. Yeah, right here. Oh yeah, this is a this is sort of a this is sort of the key feature of what we're doing. We make these uh, these bags that we fill with a variety of, of green resources, different types of grasses, different types of weeds. Uh, we might add other things to it. To, uh, to give us a full blend of nutrients, but essentially it's it's a anaerobic process because uh, essentially the the nutrients well the the grasses in this bag are not exposed to much air unless I lift it out like this uh, within this within the within the tank itself and inside that bag they're anaerobically decomposing which is a which is a bacterial process. Uh, that is a rapid decomposition, releasing all the nutrients into the water. And if the nutrients are released into the water, then you get an aerobic exchange where aerobic bacteria break down the carbohydrates from that, and then the nutrients are essentially released in the water where they can become the, the, um, the, the source of fertilizer for the plant beds. And the feed, by the way, for the fish, because fish like grass. Herbivores eat grass and they eat detritus as do shrimp and crawfish, they just live off of dead and decomposing organic matter in part because it also contains a tremendous amount of, of live bacteria. So the, the bottom one is where you'd put your tilapia, right? Yeah, you could, this is a kind of a, this is a good aquaculture tank. You can raise any sort of fish. Not everybody's favorable to tilapia, but the, the whole variety of thin fish could be raised in, in a tank like this. And your second one you'd be raising? Yeah, this is this has got a lot of interesting, uh, uh, gives us a lot of opportunities because you can raise, you can raise fish fry in here. Uh, it's ideal for that because one, they're separated from the bigger fish, but they also eat off of algae and zooplankton and small bacteria and protozoans and things like that, which will, which will 
uh, populate this area as a result of the high nutrient load being exposed to sunlight. So all your filter feeders, you can raise clams, shrimp, crawfish, all of that sort of stuff eats the algae and eats the semi-aquatic organisms that also lay their little things that lay there and the nymphs and nymphs and, and such in the water. This is just, this is like a pond. It's like a living pond, although we control the, the exposure to the sun, we control the amount of algae, and then we can even shade the algae and grow other things like duckweed uh, to give us more of a sort of a, a diversified biological little ecosystem. Tell us about duckweed. What what is what is so great about it? Well, if you'd like to see some, we have it over here. It's on the uh, on the shadier side of this. Since we're facing the south, we use this side for growing the more sun-loving plants. Duckweed is uh, is more tolerant of shade, and it's uh, so we're using it on we're growing it on that side. This has just recently been started, uh, but typically it's uh, it's a it it grows very quickly, but it's a it's the smallest known flowering plant. It grows on the surface of the water. It can be found in all parts of the world. Uh, but it's unique in that it's a superfood um, as it contains more protein than any other plant in the plant kingdom. Uh, it's comparable to, to soy. However, it doesn't require any energy to, to process or to prepare. It's, it's uh, ready to eat and uh, it can be harvested every day. Essentially it doubles in its size uh, and its volume every 24 to 36 hours and it has an amino acid profile that looks more like animal protein than any other plant in the plant feed.